Hi, I'm Mark Crisano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're going to cover the EIA show and break it down into our normal overview, refined products, and then U.S. exports in the global uh, global world as we start to kind of uh, head into the new year and, and want to understand, okay, well, where is not only oil stocks globally, but where do we think oil products and really that those refined product side that continues to be um, you know, oversupplied on, the, on a global basis. But before we get into that, we I, we just wanted to use this chart again because this is something that we showed in the Primary Vision Frack Spread Count Show on Friday, where we're really looking at federal lands and what where where could that become an issue, especially as we head into um, a, uh, a Biden administration, where there's concern about you know some of the quick hitters that could happen if he were to ban fracking, you know, could he do it on federal land? So this gives you an indication as to where is there the most risk with obviously the DJ, the Bakken, and parts of the Delaware falling within that, um, within that component. So the Permian is important just because that, that, that um, Delaware side, which, you know, trends also into uh, New Mexico, that's going to be the one to watch because we think that's going to have the most activity pickup to try to get ahead of some of those um, potential issues. And then the question is going to be, if you have permits, how long are those permits going to be good for? You know, is there going to, are those going to be grandfathered in? And this is just going to restrict new permits. So again, these are things to consider when we when we look at federal lands and where we have most of that high concentration of oil and gas wells. So again, this is going to be something to to watch as we look into uh, production, and how do we adjust that production? And then that, that's when we get into our crude stock. Uh, crude drew down by about 3.25 million. I uh, was really driven mostly by Pad Two, if if you know, which is the Midwest that Cushing, where uh, Midwest was down about 2.43, Cushing was down uh, almost two million, and that was why we, when we were talking about the shifts that we were seeing, that we expected to see some some pull from uh, Cushing down into Pad Three and down into the Gulf of Mexico. Not only because exports remain strong, but also because we see uh, some pickup and activity that should happen along that Gulf of Mexico. You know, we there were some small draws with obviously Pad Three having a draw of about 1.17 million, but again, still well over that year-over-year and five-year average. You know, the bigger thing that's going that we should watch as well is going to be production that continues to sit at about that, you know, what we consider to be about 10.9 million. <clears throat> this is going to be one where as we have obviously uh, crude prices, uh, you know, holding fairly stable where, you know, they're down to about 52.80, but still, <clears throat> still elevated uh, and allowing uh, activity to, uh, to, to start back up. And the UAE even came out today and essentially said like warning, you know, U.S. guys don't start back up. It's like, no, that's, that's not how this works. You know, if you have a company that has the ability to hedge over 50. And right now, based on the curve, you can do that till about November when we just look at it. Obviously, there's cost associated, so it's a little bit sooner. But realistically, we're going to start to see some some activity and, and not so much for growth, but just to hold this 11 million line as far as we can, where then that's why we, we think where we're going to start to see some activity, not only to get in front of any potential issues with federal land, but also to try to uh, get some activity going and to protect that decline curve that we always talk about. This is where we uh, sit when we consider uh, total oil inventories. This is in including the SPR. Uh, right now, we'll probably take this out just because it's not as important or we'll just kind of gloss over it. But you can see that this, you know, the storage in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is really uh, wound down. There's not too much here. So this is going to be really fluctuation in the commercial stock as we go forward. But when we look at Cushing, this is the drawdown. Uh, you know, obviously we're still elevated. Uh, that that top is where we were in sixteen seventeen, and right now we're kind of in no man's land. And we, based on just what we're seeing in uh, in crude flows, we can we we think that we're going to continue to see some Cushing flow moving from Oklahoma down into uh, into uh, parts of Pad Three as we start to see some refinery activity pick up a little bit, and uh, and we we continue to see uh, exports remain fairly strong. Uh, the total oil inventory, excluding uh, SPR, we're, we're back now below 2017 levels, but again, still at the uh, top of the range. This is going to come down to, can exports remain elevated? Will we have some uh, a rise in imports? 
and what is going to happen with some of the crew that was pushed offshore that's going to come back. Again, the, the, usually the last two weeks of December and the first two weeks of January can be uh, a little lumpy when we start to see some movements. And that's why we start to look at kind of that four week rolling average of what we expect. And, and again, the bigger issue here is, yeah, we had a good crew draw, but we did have a big um, products build. And that's going to we're going to look at, well, what does that mean? And how does that kind of impact what's going to happen at least through the rest of um, January? But when we look at crude oil inventory in pad three, you can see we're still at seasonally adjusted all time highs. Uh, you know, still at the top of that. And and we typically kind of flatline here and then we start to accelerate in the end of January as we go into February. You know, this is going to be one to consider because yes, we have exports that are that are still there that are that are maintaining about a 3 million barrels a day. But we really need to see this start to, to draw down because we still have about, a, you know, as the OPEC was saying, we have about a little over 160 or about 160 million barrels a day, uh, 160 million barrels in storage above the five-year average, which is what people are really considering and looking at when we're talking about what is OPEC doing, how are they structuring it, how are they trying to draw down stock. And this is one of those big ones where we need to see this really start to come down if we're going to get any kind of acceleration in crude pricing. And and I mean, obviously, we've had crude prices you know get fairly strong with a weak dollar and just some of the um, some of the storage as we went into a year end come off. But here, when we look at imports, imports were up eight hundred seventy thousand barrels a day, really driven by Pad One and uh, Pad Five. You know, as we said last week, we thought Pad Five was going to see a spike. Again, it's always just going to come down to that timing. But here, we we see some of this now. Pad Five will start to normalize. We expect Pad Three to see and recognize a bigger increase in imports. And that's going to kind of offset. So imports will will remain elevated, still not quite at the year over year. But again, the, you know, pad one will normalize a bit. But we think pad three and pad two is going to pick back up. Uh, on, on the uh, on the product side, which is something that we'll talk about as well, uh, diesel continues to come into our market. You know, we had a uh, we had a tanker that that actually diverted into Florida, and it was a super tanker with middle distillates. Again, that was supposed to go to Peru. Now it's coming to us. Now we have a total of about 26 tankers carrying about 962,000 tons with a lot of gasoline blending components that are starting to shift into our market. It's still below December. You know, December we had about 72. Uh, January, there's about an, another eight additional tankers that are expected to come. It's going to be a matter of, again, where's the pricing, where's benefits, but that's going to something that we'll talk about a little bit later as well, because this is going to be important when we're thinking about, okay, well, how are we going to see a drawdown in crude stock, in, uh, in crude stocks, if we continue to see these builds in, uh, in products, because again, you're taking oil, you're making product. And if those products continue to go higher with weak demand, you know, uncertainties going forward, then you're going to start to see some of that, um, some, some of those, uh, increases that we've seen in refinery activities start to kind of level off and come down a little bit, which will slow that oil demand overall. And that's why when we look at runs, it's so important to appreciate kind of where we sit. So our view is that we were going to get to about 83%, uh, really by the end of January. Right now we're at about 82%. So we're kind of right within that, that ballpark. We still will get a little bit of growth and you can see where that growth really came from. Pad three had, a, had that little bit of 108,000. Pad five had an increase of 139,000 barrels a day. The one that we expect to obviously see an increase is pad three. That's one that we that we think is going to get that extra one percent up, but again, we're not. There's really not enough activity to to see that run past that eighty three percent utilization rate, which is again going to going to kind of marry with well, how are refined products doing? Where is storage? And that's where we're going to have to consider is okay. Okay, if we can't keep it in storage here, or if we don't have demand here, what is the abroad look? And abroad is softened a bit which is again going to start to uh, to weigh on how active refiners are going to look because we have seen some increases in uh, crack spreads, which again has supported, but on a seasonally adjusted level, it's still very low. It's right at the bottom of the range. And that's something to consider because even though we've had some strength come in, it's really not enough to see not only just increasing uh, you know, uh, runs, but also which again is going to be oil demand, but their demand on the consumer side continues to be under pressure, which is why we continue to see builds in refined products on the back end. 
you know, rent applied demand, this is what we were talking about last week and the ones that were that we want to talk about quickly. <clears throat> Gasoline was one that we continued to to uh, be concerned about. We think that's going to remain low. Uh, it only had an increase of about 91,000 91, barrels a day. The one that we thought, well, the, I should say the two that we thought we were going to see some love, uh, especially this week and into next week, is uh, dis, uh, distillate and jet fuel. So distillate was up 668,000 barrels a day. Again, this is a very seasonal move. Uh, the the cold snap will help. Obviously, there's concern about will polar, polar vortex come down. Again, that will be supportive of uh, distillate and that heating oil demand. Diesel uh, remains robust, especially into trucking. So that's going to be some some uh, support. You know, the the problem is going to be how aggressive can we get? How much uh, demand can we see over the coming uh, weeks? And, you know, right now, we're, we think that it's just going to continue to track the five-year average, even though we do have some tailwinds. The, the, the normal, or I should say, the, where we normally used to be on heating oil demand continues to get diminished as we see natural gas taking market share, you know, a bit more propane taking market share. And again, these are things that are going to weigh. So even though we do have that bullish push, we're going to cap out much sooner than we have in the past. And then we will get some demand from from uh, the trucking side. But again, that's also been realized. Uh, jet, this is see, this is kind of that seasonal pump that's going to fall off quickly. Uh, so that's one that we don't think is going to uh, is going to remain. You know, propane, again, coming full circle to that heating demand. Propane is going to continue to be one of the ones that's going to see that demand when it's, it's going to take from diesel. But again, Propane is going to be the one to watch because even though we may be concerned about some of the refined products, we think LPG, LNG, propane, natural gas in general will have uh, some some uh, some longevity to some of these moves that we're continuing to see, uh, not just in the U.S. but also abroad. Now, when we look at uh, at crude oil floating storage, as we said last week, we thought we were going to fall within the bottom of the cloud, and here we are. <laughs> it's not. Uh, there's really nothing to say, you know, based on what we're seeing, there's really nothing that's going to push us back to the five-year average. Uh, we're going to stay within the bottom of the range as we go through uh, the rest of January at this point, just based on what we see in the water, what's going to come this way. So again, there's there's not too much in terms of uh, shifts uh, up or down in the crude oil uh, floating storage, and especially like as we always highlight or try to highlight, typically we see... Uh, refinery throughput increase in pad three, and then that increases imports, increases pull from uh, from Cushing. So as we get that, let's call it an additional, you know, 50 basis points to 100 basis points of activity within pad three, that will pull some down from both locations, but not enough to see too much changing. And then that's why when we look at pad three, when we look at imports, uh, seasonally adjusted, you know that that uh, five five year low. Uh, there's again, it's it will will continue to see this trend up, but it'll still stay well below that uh, that five year average. But when we look at pad two, and this is one that we've been talking about, you know, we have a new seasonally adjusted high over the last five years. Uh, it's going to continue. We, uh, we we just see additional strength. It, it'll fall back, as you can see. It's fairly lumpy, and and we, the the slope. If you look at the average here, the slope is the same. It's just obviously from a much higher starting point, and we think that we'll get this move down. But a, again, we're going to maintain this elevated level, and we think that the trend will stay where we get some drawdowns and then we, we build back up. It's just going to be at a level of, you know, let's call it 3.1 million and not the average of 2.8. So again, we're just starting at the higher level and we're going to have the same seasonal or weekly moves. But overall, we're going to continue to see imports into pad two, especially as we have more demand for, for diesel, heating oil. You know, that's going to be supportive of activity uh, for the refining side within um, the Midwest, which will pull down more crude, especially because this is going to pull down from Canada. It's going to pull down some of the heavier barrel barrels, which is good for that heating oil disty cut. Again, these are things that we're considering as we go through the end of January. And we think, obviously, turnarounds are going to start earlier instead of it being end of February into March. It'll start uh, earlier in February. So again, these are kind of that last push before we start to see some of these rollovers overall. And then when we look at just total activity uh, within within the uh, uh, the the grouping, as we've said, you know, we're we're back above the bottom. You know, that bottom is really 2010. Uh, it it's just 
83% is kind of where we think we're going to sit. Maybe we get some spike to 85, but it, over the next uh, two weeks, we think it's going to be at that uh, you know average about 83% uh, utilization rate. There's really not much to say or really any demand to show that this should go much higher. So that's why we're comfortable kind of staying within this uh, this throughput point, which is is enough to draw down some oil barrels. But again, with that that those big bills and refined product, you know, it's just taking an oversupply from one and putting it into another, but we still have an oversupply in, in, in one and now we're getting a bigger oversupply in the other. So again, you're just we're just moving the problem from one part of the supply chain to the other. And that's why we have to really consider what is going to what's going to happen with uh, refined product demand on the consumer side, which we'll cover in the next segment.